My name is Luca De Giglio, I'm from Italy and I'm the founder of uh, tripscommunity.com. In short, I've been into the vacation rental industry for now like 18 years, since 2001, when I first went to Prague and I convinced the ladies at the railway station who were offering apartments to go online. They didn't even have email at the time, so we used SMS for bookings, so it was really, really early. And uh, for a few years, that was my lifestyle business. So I had like a, a booking website, which was pretty close to what later uh, Airbnb became. So all the features Airbnb did later, I had done them before. And uh, since it was a lifestyle business, the aim was for me just to travel. I was really enjoying life at the time and um, not growth. So when Silicon Valley got into the business with you know the lot, lot of money and a lot of expertise and big plans, it took them two or three years to basically destroy my business model, which was based on organic search. So people would look for apartments in Prague and other cities and they would find my websites. After that, I built, I created a startup in the same space and the startup is specialized in uh, online distribution. So we just basically take care of bookings for property managers and uh, owners, hosts and so on. Uh, for the last two years, I've been also uh, an expert in training people in the industry through a website called hosttraining.com. And uh, for the last couple of years um, before I discovered what the blockchain could do in this space, I kind of went into a crisis because I realized all of us in the industry were basically working on what was left um, after the OTAs uh, got their share. And so in terms of uh, operative margins, reducing operative margins, and especially uh, less freedom to decide how to work and more like control from the OTAs. So basically I started suffering the excess uh, power of OTAs, and by OTAs of course I mean Airbnb, Booking, HomeAway and all the others. Um, and I found that there was an imbalance, that there was no balance anymore. The platforms which were supposed to facilitate this market were controlling and are controlling the market. So in 2017, it was June, I was sitting with my sysadmin, the guy who takes care of the servers, and he told me about Ethereum. Ethereum is a cryptocurrency. I already knew Bitcoin, I already own Bitcoin since you know 2013. So I knew about blockchain and, and cryptos, but I had never heard of Ethereum. And the funny thing, the interesting thing about Ethereum was that Ethereum would allow you to program on the blockchain, just to keep it very simple. That opened my eyes and I remember when he was talking, it took me like less than three minutes to go like, all right, we need to do the Airbnb on the blockchain, something decentralized, something which is in the hands of the people who use it. So the hosts and the guests and the property managers and the software companies and not some third party, which is um, concentrated on extracting value from the platform. So that's, that's how the idea started. And since that time, I just went 100%. I just like completely changed my focus and I went straight into this idea. I wrote a white paper, then I built a community. I basically told people in the industry, let's do this. And we worked together on, on this white paper, which you can find on our website. It took us four months, more than 30, 40 people working on every single aspect on how to build an alternative uh, platform. I'm going to try to explain why the blockchain makes sense from an economic point of view, not from a technical point of view. And it, it goes like this, more or less. So imagine that you wanted to build a hotel chain. You want to create a new hotel chain, so you have an idea and you are the founder of a startup you go look for investors, you get the money, and together with investors, you basically build this company and you start acquiring hotels. So you either build the buildings where the hotels will be, or you buy hotels, or maybe you rent them. Anyway, you are creating the assets on which you build your, your company, right? So 
this is the traditional way and this is how most companies have been have been built in the 20th century um, and the ownership of this company is of course yours as a founder and the investors right there's two parties here then something new happens uh, people invent platforms and by platforms i mean companies like uh, uber airbnb um, amazon and so on and the difference is that the founders and investors um, they don't build the assets they onboard the assets so uber tells people why don't you drive your car in spare time and make some extra money Airbnb says, why don't you rent your room or your house when you're not there and make some extra money and pay your mortgage and so on. And that's a great way for a company to, to scale because if you don't have to buy 100 rooms in a hotel but you can just you know have people upload them in your website, that's much, much faster. It's not capital intensive. You can focus your uh, business on, on attracting customers who buy these assets or rent these assets. And so the platforms are very successful. It's a new model um, and it's one of the most successful models we are seeing in the, in the last you know, decade at least. Um, but something is new, right? So now the company is made of founders who had the idea and put the work, investors who put the money and the contacts and their networks. And then you have, let's stay focused on Airbnb now, uh, they have the hosts. Now, what do the hosts bring to the platform? They bring the house, they bring the bricks, you know, the most important asset, I, I would say, in the whole ecosystem. And they bring the work. Uh, so they welcome people, they clean the apartment and they do all the other, you know, many, many, many chores you have to do when you have to welcome guests so hosts are part of this ecosystem they're maybe even the most important part in a way and uh, that's where things break because if you look at the ownership in these platforms it's still in the 20th century's model it's um, founders and investors there's no hosts hosts do not own at all the, uh, the platform and I think this is the, the, the weak point, and that's the part which needs to be upgraded, right? Because the interest of the platform is completely misaligned with the interest of the, the network, of people who actually use this platform, right? So um, in, in TRIPS, we have this different approach. We, we think that ownership has to go mostly to people who use it, who use the platform. So mostly I would say hosts, and then, of course, founders get a little bit, investors are invited to the table, but not uh, to own the whole thing. So they are part of the investors because the hosts are also investors, the property managers. So maybe basically the industry is investing in the, in the platform and also the guests, because after all, the money comes from the guests, right? Once this is running, all the money comes from the guests. Now, this may seem, uh, I don't know, revolutionary way, or you know, it could be uh, sad that this is like impossible and you know it's out of this world. But first of all, we've seen many things which were impossible become possible in the past. But especially, uh, it, this is actually going in that direction. This is not my idea only. For instance, there's a very clear signal here from Uber and Airbnb who asked. Um, the SEC to give uh, shares to their hosts, right? So nothing has happened so far, but that's the direction they want to take. And uh, especially Airbnb has been very clear about that. They say that uh, a 21st century company need to uh, have interests aligned with, with the hosts, right? So what should we do here? Should we wait for them to do this? Um, maybe, uh, but then we should ask, are they going to do this properly? Are they going to just do this uh, partially or even worse, they do it as a label just to show they're sharing, but they're sharing just a little bit and there's no um, real control given, you know, to the, to the users. We don't know where this is going. It's certainly a very good direction, but I would say since we work in this every day, um, why don't we simply start moving that direction? We 
we can actually push these big companies to change and if they don't change well we do our own thing that's basically the thing so the concept here is being called um, tokenization and tokenization means i take a company and i issue tokens these are cryptocurrencies and these tokens represent the value of the company and then i give these tokens to people who use the system uh, maybe because they make a booking, maybe because they accept a booking, or maybe because they buy this, these tokens. So we have the tokens representing the company in the hands of the whole ecosystem, right? Uh, this is really new, we don't know where it is going to go, but the concept is, is pretty clear, right? It's basically like a startup issuing shares from day one to everybody, not only to investors. And this also breaks this kind of uh, um, priority investors get, you know, if you are a business angel or a, or a venture capital fund, you today have a priority on investing in these high growth companies. And then the other people, including people using the platform and making it real, like hosts, um, get the chance to, you know, come at the table just when the IPO is launched. And we know that IPOs are always are getting later and later, Airbnb has a down one, for instance, right? A very important um, and interesting characteristic of uh, TRIPS is its openness. We are using 100% open source software and our inventory is open. What does it mean? It means that TRIPS may at a certain point stop working, uh, the project may fail, but anybody who's been into TRIPS until that point can simply take the code, make a copy of it, take the inventory, make a copy of it, and continue from where we left off. So if you're investing your time in TRIPS or even your money, you are not locked in. You can go on, or even if TRIPS continues, you can decide that you have a better idea and, and do your own thing. We can call this a fork. You take what we have done so far together and you take a different path, but you don't start from zero. Imagine if you invested in Airbnb or imagine what happened with Airbnb or Booking. Uh, you have collected, I don't know, a thousand reviews and then you decide Airbnb is not for you anymore and you wanna do your own thing, your own platform or even just your own business. You cannot take away your reviews. They belong to the, to the platform. So you have to start from zero from Airbnb or you know, going to Booking or, or do your own website, whatever. You are kind of locked in. Whatever you've been building until that point is lost, right? Um, and that's very important because in this way we can say you are investing, you are betting on trips, right? And your bet won't be lost even if trips will fail. And let's be honest, any startup has a very high mortality potential, right? A probability. So trips will probably die, if you have to be honest at this point. We can't say trips will be a success. What we can say is you get into trips, you stay with us a year or two, five, whatever, and at a certain point you can just leave and do your own thing or follow somebody else who learned the trade of the blockchain platform in trips and decided to do it uh, partially different, right? And funny thing, if this happens and this will happen, it's fine. We're gonna get bigger as an ecosystem. So you leave trips, you do your thing, and you're making trips bigger too. Because here the, the idea is that the ecosystem needs to grow, all right? It's not one specific project or experiment which needs to, success, to be successful. And that will be a success even if trips fails. And that's the result of openness. It's really powerful. Uh, compared to us, let's say that somebody wants to make an alternative to one of these OTAs, they have to start from zero. They have to build as, as good code as Booking.com or Airbnb and from zero. So that's gonna cost a lot of money, a lot of time, and they have to build their inventory from zero. That's why nobody invests in this anymore. It's just the barrier, the entry is just too high, right? The barrier to entry in an open system is really, really low. It's basically zero. So we're gonna have thousands of experiments and one of them will be successful or a cluster of them will be successful and become a real alternative. Of course, I hope it's gonna be trips, but it doesn't matter. 
Uh, what I really want to do here with our community, we want to start to go in that direction and go wherever it takes us. So what about the blockchain into this? Uh, it is pretty simple. Think about how things work right now. You have the internet and this is the decentralized open protocol, which we all use. And on top of this open decentralized protocol, the internet, there are the websites and the apps. So the OTAs, Airbnb or Booking. And on top of them, we build our own businesses. We are property managers, we are software services, we are hosts, whatever, right? So where does the blockchain go into this? The, blo the blockchain goes between the internet, so it goes on the top of the internet and below the OTAs. So you have internet, blockchain, OTAs and users. And the blockchain makes the OTAs smaller in the sense that the OTAs do not need to deal anymore with trust so I'm booking an Airbnb because I know that if I send the money to Airbnb and something goes wrong, I get my money back or I'm protected. That's why some people call um, the commissions on the OTAs the trust tax. So I'm paying for the trust, not only because they help me find things. This is the discoverability. That's the easy part. Discoverability, it's easy in the internet. You don't need so big companies to deal with it, right? Um, so you take away the trust factor from the OTA, so they don't need to do the trust anymore because now the trust is done by the blockchain, is done by the smart contracts. And you also take away uh, many tasks they do, which is uh, what we call curation. So when something goes wrong, some person has to kind of be involved, uh, like when something gets broken in the apartment, for instance. And this can be dealt uh, by the network. So instead of having one person working for the company, you can have a group of people working on the app, on their smartphone and deciding about issues, okay? So you are making the OTAs much thinner. This level, this layer, which is the OTA, becomes much thinner. And if you extremize this, it becomes a protocol. And when it's a protocol, there's not even company behind that. So we are very far from having protocol OTAs but we are much closer to having low impact OTAs. So same system as today, you are booking through a website, an OTA, but the OTA is just not taking all this commission and is not so powerful. That's the whole idea because the blockchain allows us to do that. Is the blockchain a threat to the OTAs? It is a threat only if they don't evolve uh, in the same way that the internet has been a threat to traditional travel agencies and they didn't become online travel agencies and somebody else came from outside with a fresh mind and you know no legacy uh, culture in the company basically and they build these uh, online travel agencies OTAs so it is not a threat if they want to evolve it is a threat if they don't want to evolve We are building trips on yet another layer um, below us and this layer is the protocols for the sharing economy. So the blockchain protocols for the sharing economy. So again, internet, blockchain, protocols, trips. And these protocols are being built by a Californian company called Origin Protocol and they are building 100% uh, open source. There's uh, top level engineers doing that. There's uh, even famous people, people who built the internet as we know it, people who worked in Dropbox, YouTube, and uh, PayPal, and so on. So you have to think this two ways now. There's gonna be uh, decentralized companies and there's gonna be centralized companies. Centralized companies are, again, the OTAs, internet, OTA, and users. And then you have decentralized companies which have internet, blockchain, some kind of protocols, OTAs users. Uh, every layer of this new system is open, while on the other side, the layer OTA is a closed layer. Another important aspect, and I understand that uh, I'm, I'm talking about so 
you know, many different things that it's going to be really hard to grasp it at the first time. So do not expect to understand from, you know, from the beginning what we're talking about here. It's a bit like the internet at the beginning. You, you couldn't really understand it. You had to experience it. But the theory goes that we are trying to build um, a flat network. So it means that we don't want to grow going up as a pyramid. We want to grow as a flat network. Um, that simply means that the more users we have and the more bookings we have, uh, it does not correspond to having a bigger company running trips. Um, the aim is to keep trips as a company as small as possible and the ecosystem as big as possible. So we want the ecosystem to grow, right? This allows for a much better scalability and uh, I would argue this allows for a much better localization because once you give people in the network and people in the network are hosts and guests mostly to decide about issues like again when something gets broken uh, you can also add a new element which is the local element uh, if something gets broken in an apartment in uh, Paris and I have so the five judges in the panel who are called to decide three of them are from Paris I'm having a better local response to it and there are always issues which are local you need to know what's happening in the city to judge you know like the guests arrived late of course there was a strike and uh, maybe in that area of the city it's, it's really hard to move when there's a strike and, and somebody from a centralized OTA may not grasp entirely these local aspects so better localization uh, faster growth and less impact from the central company behind this because trips as a company uh, is a centralizing um, aspect but it will try to to stay small the community aspect of trips is really interesting um, we've been working for more than a year on on the project and uh, most of the work has been done by community members who are not employees they simply want to help the project and uh, going back to tokenization we give every month or every couple of months we give people trips which are our tokens in exchange for their work it's I got this funny way to say it it's like we give fake money for real work and the idea is that first of all you're working on trips not because you want to you know make money become rich you, you do it because you want to have an alternative on your work. You're already working in this space and you want an alternative, so you help this project. On the other hand, if this project becomes big, then you have these tokens and they're going to acquire value and maybe you're going to be able to sell them for, let's say, real money um, or use them for bookings, right? So this is working pretty well. Um, I wouldn't say this is, you know, the best way to deal with every aspect of the company. Of course, it's not. Um, you have to see Trips as the classic startup. So the boundaries are very clear. Some people are higher, some people are not. And then you have a community, which normally you don't have around startups. And then you have the market, which are people who book and people who, who accept the booking, right? So we have this um, layer around the startup, which is it acts like a protecting layer. You know, it absorbs in a way the the shocks right they are closer to the community they can help when we need they can help us scale before we hire and so on it's a really interesting i would call it experiment uh, i've personally never done it and everything which is being done outside is, is similarly you know like new so it's a very interesting social an economic uh, experiment so just for this I think it's worth to be part of trips because you are kind of anticipating how probably the workplace will will look in in 10 or 20 or or 30 years the DAP is our website basically it's called DAP because it's a decentralized application 
so if you are in crypto, you, you know this term and if you're not, get, get used to it because it's gonna be more, more and more common. So our dApp is pretty basic. It's already working, it's in beta. We decided to go live with it because we want this software to become stronger and the only way to make a strong software is to release it uh, into the wide basically. So we are launching this uh, very, very soon and you're gonna be able to, to book through the DAP. Uh, if you are a guest, you need to know how wallets work or you need to be open and you know, have, take some time to learn. It doesn't take a lot of time. I would say in one hour you can get around it if you are at least you know, a bit proficient with computers. You don't need to be a coder, of course, just you know, careful and, and concentrated and you'll learn about this. And for now, and of course, it's gonna be easier and easier and we hope that in a few years it's gonna be as easy as any other any other website if you are a host we basically offer you the chance to just you know don't even touch that we can do it for you and this is like a, a moment in it's gonna last for for a few years this moment in which we help you but on the other end if you want to do it yourself and we'd be very happy if you can do it yourself you can simply you know create your profile and upload and take your bookings directly uh, the thing is, we realize few hosts have the time and the, the knowledge at the moment to do that, so we decided to give this alternative, let's say, managed DAP bookings. We, of course, need money to do this, and uh, we decided to take also a non-conventional approach to this. So we're not gonna get money from venture capital, or from any kind of uh, investor because we realize that the community is more than ready to give money for that. So if we are able to raise enough money from the community, then our interests are gonna be much, much more aligned to the ones of the community itself. If you get money from external investors who are expecting a return, then it's more difficult to balance the interests of the community, the platform and investors. So we will be open to investors at a certain time, but the strategy right now is like, we're gonna try to get as much money and as, as many rounds as we can from the community itself. And that means hosts, that means property manager and software companies and whoever is actually using the system and whoever is building their business on the platform, right? We already have raised money internally with the community. Internally, I mean people who are closer to the project, who we know personally at the moment. And then we are gonna enlarge this, uh, you know, pool of investors slowly. We're gonna do a classic, you know, uh, equity crowdfunding and so on. Every time we get money, we try to spend it and show how this money is well spent and how we grow the business and how we get bookings and so on. We will probably reach a point when investors will want to get in uh, and we will accept them on, on our terms. I don't want this to sound arrogant um, because it's not. It's just, it is much better that the people who use the system pay for it. And, uh, and it's also you know, a new way to do this. So it's, it's another of these experiments, which I find really, really interesting, because again, it may be the future way of raising capital. Um, and I'm not talking about ICOs here, I'm not talking about selling tokens to crypto investors. This is probably even worse in terms of uh, misalignment, because crypto investors are unexperienced investors who just want to make you know, a quick buck. And um, what we've seen so far is that, you know, after three months, if the token hasn't gone 10x or under x, they come to the Telegram and they start, they don't come to our Telegram because we haven't done an ICO, but they go to the, te the Telegram and they start asking for when moon, when are we gonna go on that exchange and so on. And this is really distracting. So we're gonna try to avoid this as much as possible. And uh, at the same time, we keep an eye on the ecosystem in, in the crypto world and see if there are raising money raising opportunities there but again on our terms the best way to keep in touch is by far the newsletter the newsletter is based on a decentralized protocol called email and we know that when we write to you we're going to reach you uh, the other systems like facebook or twitter 
you never know. Uh, you can like our Facebook page and never see a message from us because Facebook decides that you shouldn't see it or Facebook decides that we should pay them to reach you who asked us to be in touch, right? So please go to the newsletter, subscribe there. We won't send you many messages, but they're gonna be interesting to the point. And then of course you can, you know, join the other platforms, but uh, email first. It's open, it's centralized, it's censorship resistant, and it's borderless. Thank you for listening and bye-bye.